Hello there, my name is Werner Barnost and I'm a lecturer in electrical engineering for almost 20 years now. What I have here in my hand is a simple electromagnetic system. I've got a battery, it's a power source, some electrical wire that's then coiled around an Allen key which will serve as, as the core and of course the magnet needs something to pick up so I've got some washes on the table here. Now obviously if this isn't connected to anything, if, if the wire isn't connected to the battery the Allen key itself will not be able to pick up the washer. But the moment we connect the wire to the battery, a current will start flowing through this coil, which creates a magnetic field inside the coil. And this field is then amplified by the core material, which has to be some magnetic metal. Now let's see if it works and if we connect the battery over here, if it now picks up. But of course, the moment that I'm going to disconnect, the coil from the battery, it's simply going to drop because without the battery it can't work. Now did you know that the invisible things of the Creator can be seen and understood in the things that He has made? Romans 1 verse 20 reads, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now join me in this video as I share with you how I have come to see God's power in my life in a battery. How the core material of the Allen key represents what my life is filled with. How the thickness of the wire and the number of turns in the coil represents the strength of my faith and my relationship with Christ. And then how the purpose of the magnet to lift something up symbolizes the purpose of my life, which is to lift Christ up. Let me share with you the parable of the electromagnet. Let's quickly look at another short explanation and demonstration of an electromagnet just so that we can make sure we understand all the components and their working. As a bit of a bigger illustration of what an electromagnet could look like, I have um, taken a, a piece of wood and rope since I don't have anything big enough metal but I do carpentry as a hobby. And we would have our electrical core material and around this we would wind our coil which in this case is a piece of rope and we would wind it around our core material as many turns as we can and then once it's wound we of course need to connect this to a power source which we don't have right now and once it's connected to the power source and this becomes magnetized with let's say a north and a south pole the purpose of this would be to pick something up for instance another piece of iron of course to pick it up now obviously wood is not magnetic and it definitely won't work but this is just to illustrate the principle now we've got the core material we've got a coil which is made of electrical conductors and we can determine how many turns we want to put around this and how thick our wire is and of course the quality of our material which wood is definitely not a good thing and the purpose of a magnet as we mentioned earlier is to pick something up to lift it up so let's just look again at the primary components of our electromagnet system that we are going to use in this parable. We first have the power source, we then have the core material, we have the coil of which we can determine how many turns we want it and how thick we want the conductors to be and the purpose of the magnet is to pick something up. We're going to take these components one by one and see how we can find from Scripture the explanation or the parallel 
of these components and how they reveal the invisible things of God. So let's immediately start with the power source. We want the power source, of course, to be strong, continuous and trustworthy. This little battery would not count in my eyes as a, as a good power source. But the Bible is absolutely clear on what or who should be our strength and our power source. Let us look at a few scriptures. In John 15 verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Exodus 15 verse 2, The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And 2 Samuel 22 verse 33, God is my strength and my power, and he makes my way perfect. There are, of course, many other verses we could look at. So let's look at four more. In Jeremiah 16, verse 19, we read, O Lord, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of affliction. Psalm 18, verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. In Psalm 20 verse 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And in Psalm 28 verse 7, The Lord is my strength and my shield. If we are not connected to plugged into or abide in Christ who is our power, our strength, our salvation, our magnet is powerless. Without His eternal power, our lives are without strength and without purpose. Let's move on to the next component which is the core material. What should our core material be made of? Or, in the context of the parable, what should our lives be filled with? We want the core material, which you can see here without any windings, to be a material that allows the magnetic flux lines, or the magnetic flux to flow freely through and within. And it must keep all those flux lines in the core. So what should the core be made of? What should our lives be filled with? Now that's a very important question, you see, because as we saw that the type of material that we use in our core will dictate or determine the ease with which the flux or let's say the Holy Spirit can flow through our lives. So let us look at what our lives should and shouldn't be filled with. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 reads, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So my body my life should be acceptable and holy unto God. We shouldn't be transformed or look like this world. No, we must be renewed and transformed into a living sacrifice. But how do we renew our minds? Let's look at what Philippians 4 verse 8 says. Finally, brethren, 
whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now this is a clear guide as to what we should be filling our minds with in order to renew our call to clean our lives. What should we not do? 1 John 2 verse 15 and 16 reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. Our affection and our intellect should not be connected to this world. For then the love of and the power of the Father can't work in us and through us. So what should we do if the world is in us? What are these worldly things that we should be looking out for? Colossians 3 has the answer to that question. In verse 5 of Colossians 3 we read, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Here, are that, here is that list of worldly things. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry. In verse 8, but now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. In verse 9, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. It continues in verse 10. Instead of putting off, what should we put on? And have put on the new man who is renewed, ah, renewed again, in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Therefore, as the elect of God, verse 12, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. And verse 14, and above all these things, put on love which is the bond of perfectness put to death put off put off the old worldly man and put on the man renewed in the image of our creator we should put on the character of christ in our lives and above all love why because god is love let's look at another passage that describes this contrast between what our core, our life should not be filled with and what it should be filled with. And we're going to go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5 verse 16 reads, This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And then a long list of core corrupting attributes are listed that, in verse 21, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, they that do such things cannot fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. You cannot operate as an electromagnet. Let's continue in, in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, ah, here is what our life should be filled with, is love, Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Ah, to renew to transform our old core into a new sanctified life, we need to live and walk in the Holy Spirit's guidance and power. He will sanctify our old core, our old life, into the likeness of Christ. Now John, 
describes our life as either being filled with light or darkness. Let us go and look at this last example. In John 12, John 12 verse 46 reads, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Continuing in John 3 verse 16 to 19, which is probably the, one of the most quoted passages of all of scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Ah, but it doesn't stop there. Few people read the rest. Verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. What is your life filled with? What is your core made of? Is it filled with the evil darkness of this world or with the light and character of Jesus Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit? The choice is, of course, yours. Let's move on to our next component, which is the coil wound around our core material. Now, what attributes are we looking for in this coil? We want lots of turns, as we mentioned, which we're going to translate in our parable with a strong relationship. And secondly, we want thick conductors, which we're going to translate with a strong faith. And we need this in order to maximize the power flow, God's power flow, through our lives. Let us first just talk about the number of turns that we put around our core. Because the more turns we put around the core material, the more flux we are putting into our core. Or, in the context of the parable, the more time we spend with God, the more and stronger our relationship becomes. Now what did Jesus do? How did Jesus keep his relationship with his Father strong? Let's go and read in Luke 6. Verse 12, it reads, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. Now this was in the context where Jesus had to appoint his 12 apostles. He had a big decision to make. And he had to make sure that he made the right one. So he spent the entire night in prayer with his father. Let's continue with Matthew 14, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Clearly, the key to drawing power from God, the Infinite One, lies in prayer, communication with the Infinite Source of power. In the same way, Jesus made sure that his magnetic field remained strong. We should also pray for each other. Let's go and read in James 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11 Wherefore also we pray always for you. Why? That our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Yes, pray for each other that God would fulfill the work of faith with power. How? By increasing the flux lines in your core. Or, 
in the context of the parable, increasing the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, if you struggle with cleansing your core or sanctifying your life, pray and ask. For in Matthew 7, verse 7, Christ promised, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. But what should we pray for? What should we ask for? And this is the confidence, 1 John 5 verse 14 says, that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So we must ask according to God's will. And what is His will? Well, your sanctification, according to 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3, and that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 14. And we know from John 14 verse 6 that Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. We are still looking at the coil of our electromagnet and specifically the number of turns in our coil, which represents the strength of our relationship with God. Now God has made a special and a specific provision for us to strengthen this relationship with Him, to sanctify our life, to spend time with Him. And that was created in the very beginning in the form of the seventh day, in Genesis 2 verse 1, the Sabbath. He created and set apart one whole day each week for us to increase our turns. To strengthen our relationship with Him. Let's read about this in Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 verse 13 to 14. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor Him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now is this then only meant for Jacob or the Jews? Absolutely not. For Galatians 3 verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abram's seed and heirs according to to the promise. So if you belong to Christ, this promise, this invitation to delight yourself in the Lord is yours also, for you are Abraham's seed. Now this word delight is amazing in this context. If you go to the original um, Hebrew text, that word delight means to mold. In other words, Christ gives us this Sabbath, one day every week, to spend time with Him so that He can mold our character into His likeness. What a wonderful gift. Listen to what God tells us about this in um, Exodus 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that sanctifies you. So it's a sign. In Ezekiel 20 verse 12 we read, Moreover also I give them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them, that molds us, that changes our character. And in verse 19 and 20, I am the Lord your God, walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. The Sabbath is a sign that Jesus is our Lord. It is a sign that it is He who sanctifies our lives. 
fills our core with the correct material. It is a time that He reminds us that He is our Creator and our Redeemer. So does this really apply to you and me today here in the 21st century? Let's read what Jesus said in uh, Matthew 5 verse 18. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. In Mark 2 verse 27 we also have an interesting verse. It says, Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, if the Sabbath was made for man, why would it not apply for as long as man continues to exist? And then in John 14 verse 15 and 21 we read, if you love me, keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Why keep his commandments? To be saved? No. We want to keep his commandments because he who loves us saved us and he wants us to love him by spending time with him. Even at the very end of time, there will be a group of people that will keep his commandments and the faith in Jesus. Let's read what Revelation 14 verse 12 says. But before we read Revelation 14, let's just first read Isaiah 66 verse 22 and 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. From this verse, it is clear that, that the Sabbath will even be kept in the new heaven and on the new earth that God will create. And then in Revelation 14 verse 12 we read, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now please do go and read the preceding verses as well. And it shows us that keeping God's commandments is important and relevant even till the end of time. Now this verse also brings me to the second part of our coil. So the first part was the number of turns. The second part of the coil that we're going to look at now is the thickness of our wire. Now here I put a rather thick rope. I could have put on a thin rope as well. But remember we said there's a problem with having a thin wire. Let's go have a look at, at what that problem might be. So the thickness of our conductor, the thickness of the coil, determines how much current can flow through our coil or through our wire. In other words, the stronger or the thicker the wire, the stronger the current, and the stronger the magnetic field and force might be. Why is a thick wire, why is a strong faith important? Let us look at Matthew 9 verse 28. It reads, After Jesus had entered the house, the blind men came to him. Do you believe that I am able to do this? He asked. Yes, Lord, they answered. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith will it be done to you. It would seem that Christ could only do for the people, and can only do for us, what we believe and allow him to do. Let's look at another verse, Ephesians 3, verse 11 and 12. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in Him we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. Access with confidence through faith in Him. We only have access to the unlimited power of God through faith in Christ. If our wire is too thin, if our faith is too weak, we will simply burn out. A wire that's too thin and that carries too much current acts like a fuse. It simply burns out and then you lose the connection. So if our faith is too weak, 
God can't work power in our lives. Is there proof of this in Scripture? Well, let's go and have a look. Matthew 13 verse 58. Now he did not do many mighty works there. Why not? Because of their unbelief. Mark 6 verse 5 and 6 describes this, the same context or the same story. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Now the context here is where Jesus is speaking or when he went preaching in Nazareth, his own hometown. And there the unbelief of the people, the lack of faith prevented him from working his power in their lives. Now in stark contrast to this, we read in Acts about Stephen. In Acts 6 verse 8, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Full, full of what? Full of faith and power did Great signs and wonders amongst the people. Please also go and read the whole of Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is known as the Heroes of Faith chapter. And the entire chapter there describes what our heroes of faith did through the power in faith in Christ. In closing... And finally, let us look at the last component, part of our electromagnet, and that is its purpose. Now on the screen, I would like to show you um, an electromagnet. On the left there, we've got an industrial size electromagnet picking up some steel bars or slabs from a truck. On the right hand side, we have the toy version, just with some batteries, the coil and the nail, that's a screw picking up some paper clips. Now what is the purpose of our lives? What is the purpose of our electromagnet? Obviously a magnet is there to lift something up. So what is it that our dream transformed lives through which the power of the Holy Spirit and God is working, what is it that we should lift up? Or is it something that should lift us up? Let's go and read there in James 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Are you perhaps feeling down? Despondent? Without hope? Especially in this time of lockdowns and viruses? Well... Fill your life with Christ through the Holy Spirit and let Him wrap His coils around you so that He may lift you up. But there is a second lifting up that needs to be done and much more important than the first. Let's go continue reading in John 3 verse 14 and 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The rest of the verses we read earlier, so you can go and recap on those verses. I want to continue reading in John 12. And I, if I be lifted up, from the earth will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. When we allow the power of God's redeeming grace to sanctify our lives and to flow through our thick and many turns, so that the Holy Spirit can set up a strong magnetic field in our lives, then we will lift Christ in our lives through our obedience and our testimony, 
so that others may be drawn to him and be saved also. That is our purpose. Thank you for watching and letting me share with you how God showed me these invisible yet beautiful truths in a simple thing like an electromagnet. I pray that you may see more of God's invisible things in the things around you which He has made. May the Almighty be your strength and power. May the Holy Spirit sanctify your life. May your relationship with Christ grow each day, but especially on His Holy Sabbath day. May your faith in His redemption grow stronger. And may you lift up Christ in your testimony and in your obedience so that others may be drawn to Him and be lifted out of sin also. God bless.